If you've watched the news or scrolled through social media in the last week or so, it would have been hard to miss the truly sobering images of flooding across Europe, with no country hit harder than Germany. In what's being described by some as the country's worst flooding in over 700 years, many sadly lost their lives, with countless more still missing. In the aftermath of such a devastating event, several questions are being asked. Why did this happen? Why was the death toll for such an advanced, technologically developed country so high? And what will all of this do for the German political landscape, a matter of months out from the federal elections? In this video, we'll try and answer exactly that. If you want more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, as we're always talking about European news, politics and elections. Thanks for your support. When it comes to the cause of the extreme weather, the consensus is clear. Climate change. Germany's very own Meteorological Association highlighted on Twitter that with global warming, weather extremes are becoming more violent and arguably more frequent. Yet this doesn't explain away why extreme weather and flooding led to such a sheer loss of life. Because, just across the border, the Netherlands also experienced extreme rainfall. And while it wasn't nearly on the same level as Germany and Belgium, not a single person died. The key, though, was the early weather systems. Well, we say systems, but in reality it's one overarching system. The European Flood Awareness System. In theory, the EFAS would have detected and forecast extreme rainfall, moving to quickly warn national and regional flood centres in order for them to get on a war footing and warn the relevant residents to evacuate or otherwise prepare. And, well, EFAS worked. On the 9th and 10th of July, flood forecasts by the system indicated a high probability of flooding for the Rhine River Basin, affecting Switzerland and Germany with further forecasts giving the same warning for the Meuse River Basin, with the system going on to push out more than 25 other notifications to national and regional authorities over the next four days. In fact, the system even issued alerts of life-threatening floods earlier in the week. These notifications were not, however, acted upon, or more precisely actually passed on to the people who would be at risk by the national and regional authorities. In fact, it's been revealed that some warnings ended up being issued after the flood had already hit. Hannah Cloak, a hydrologist at the University of Reading, who actually co-founded the European system, highlighted that the forecasting was adequate. It was the acting on the forecasting that was clearly not, in part due to the decentralised nature of Germany's natural disaster prevention system. That is to say that it's up to the regions to act on warnings, not national authorities. And these regional authorities, to put it bluntly, messed up, leaving warnings until far too late, until networks themselves had been knocked out. The head of the Federal Office of Civil Protection, Armin Schuster, said as much. The warning infrastructure wasn't our problem, but the effectiveness with which the authorities and the population reacted to these warnings. In any case, the potential failure of the chain of communications has, unsurprisingly, led to many, many questions being asked of politicians and authorities. German politics and flooding is far from a new mix. As Politico highlights, Helmut Schmidt, Chancellor of West Germany between 1974 and 1982, first became a household name due to his role as senator in Hamburg, when he coordinated the rescue operations in the aftermath of a storm surge in 1962. A storm surge that caused over 370 square kilometres to flood and sadly led to 347 people losing their lives. Similarly, Gerard Schroeder turned his fortunes around thanks in no small part to a flood that ravaged parts of eastern Germany. In fact, it was this disastrous flood that provoked the European Commission into setting up the European Flood Awareness Scheme, pledging to ensure that such devastating flooding would never be allowed to ravage Europe again. Anyway, six weeks prior to the federal election and just before the flash floods began in August 2002, polls put support for the incumbent SDP Green Coalition at just 44% while the CDU-CSU coalition stood at 51%. After the flood, though, things reversed completely. 
Schroeder's SDP and Green Coalition polled at 51%, with the opposition down to just 43%. Well, like Schmidt, Schroeder got his hands stuck in rapidly, surveying the ravaged region and allowing the government to demonstrate compassion and commitment towards the victims, something that also conveniently allowed Schroeder to direct attention away from the tenuous economic situation in the country. And these most recent floods are no different when it comes to political manoeuvring and attention. As Germany was still reeling from the immediate aftermath of the floods and its seemingly unrelenting damage, a video emerged of Armin Laschet, the CDU-CSU candidate for the chancellorship, appearing to smile, joke and laugh with colleagues, all while Germany's president, Hank Walter Steinmeier, was giving a sombre speech about the flooded areas to German media. While Laschet was quick to apologise, writing on Twitter that his behaviour was inappropriate, the apology wasn't enough to prevent the damage being caused, especially given the sheer juxtaposition that Laschet's behaviour creates when compared with the incumbent, Merkel. While Laschet was laughing his head off, Merkel was walking through a devastated village, stressing that the German language knows hardly any words for this devastation while being on hand with the minister-president of Reinhardt Palatinate, Malu Dreyer, to all intents and purposes, a direct political opponent. Similarly, Marcus Sorda, the CSU's leader and Bavaria's premier, also spent time comforting those who lost everything in the floods. To add insult to injury, Sorda, as the CSU's leader, was in the offing to become the CDU-CSU alliance's chancellery candidate, with voters consistently preferring Sorda over Laschet, something that's likely to become more pronounced as polls update to reflect the events of the last few days, with many suggesting that Laschet should just step aside, a change that, if made, could fundamentally impact the upcoming election. Beyond just Laschet, Sorda and the CDU-CSU, the floods have also brought the issue of climate change right back to the centre of the political debate. Merkel, during her walk through the devastation, stressed that the world had to be faster to battle against climate change, with her fellow European leaders highlighting the role that climate change played in the truly devastating floods that hit Germany as well as Switzerland, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. This focus on climate change arguably provides the perfect breeding ground for the Green Party to swoop in, the issue being how to capitalise on such a disaster while still being sensitive for those who lost their lives and livelihood, something that was stressed by the global head of macro research for the financial behemoth ING when they remarked, the Greens as no other party could benefit from the visible consequences of climate change. Their role as opposition party doesn't give nice TV pictures at the crisis scene. The Greens will have to wait until the end of the imminent crisis management, hoping for a more fundamental discussion on how to tackle the impact of climate change. Even if the Greens tread carefully and wait for a more respectful time, they may not be able to capitalise on the crisis as much as they might have liked, for one major reason, their leader, Annalena Baerbock. As we covered in a recent video on the channel, Baerbock herself has been mired in scandal after scandal, something that's hurt the Greens in polling badly. In any case, it's beyond doubt that the aftermath of these floods will shape the last remaining months and weeks of the election campaign. But what do you think? Where did the system fail? And on whose head should the burden lie? Also, what will the floods mean for the September elections? Will and should the Greens capitalise on these floods? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.